during the 80s under Sir Alex Ferguson's reign, Aberdeen were incredible. But in modern times, they are merely a mediocre club in Scottish football. But it is time for the modern day Sir Alex Ferguson. God, that comment's gonna trigger a few people. But it's time for Mr. Rebuild to restore and rebuild Aberdeen. Also, just quietly, I don't think I've ever had so many people leave comments over a period of time asking for a rebuild. So for everybody that has spammed the comment section, spammed my mentions on Twitter and Instagram, this one's for you. Much respect. The objective of this series is to take a team to Champions League glory. All games barring the Champions League final will be simulated. The jump in feature cannot be used during simulations. And a warning, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. So here is a look at our starting 11 here in charge of Aberdeen. There's a few bright spots. You'd say Ferguson, Lewis Ferguson's a go-to in career mode. The young Ramsey right there looks okay, McLennan. But then there's some older players in there. Scott Brown, the former Celtic hero playing defensive midfield. We've got Longstar from Newcastle on loan. It's going to be a very interesting start to life here. But the first piece of the puzzle that we need to complete is in between the sticks. We are going to sign the Kosovonian goalkeeper. Aaron Yet Muric is going to join us here for 2.65 million pounds. And our first departure is for a Scotsman. It is Andrew Considine who is headed to Tijuana. Dylan McGow is also off, off to the French League, off to Grenoble for... 300, not 300, 650,000 pounds. And Niall McGinn, a latest player out of the club. Another player off to the Turkish league here. And since we do have a new goalkeeper in Murich, we are going to sell Joe Lewis to FC Malmo. It is an absolute clean out here in Aberdeen. Martley Watkins, the Welsh striker, off to Charleroi. And Funsu Oyo is headed to the Turkish league for 660,000 pounds. Just trying to stack some money. And that is so that we could make the signing here of another highly requested signing. I've, I read the comments, lads. I saw a lot of people asking for me to sign Muhammad Ali Cho, the French striker from Angers. 2.4 million pounds. We're going to do that. It happened again, lads. It happened again. Another scout future star. That has been assigned the wrong position. 20 overall, 79 to 94 potential. What a joke. And the thing with this is, he's a goalkeeper. We can't change his position. EA, sort it out. I mean, here are his impressive physical and mental attributes. And then there's his goalkeeping attributes. Come on, man, that is not fair. The transfer business will continue though, ladies and gentlemen. Ryan Hedges is gonna have to go cut the hedges in Schalke as we get 1.4 million pounds for him. And Declan Gallagher is off to Portsmouth. Again, just over 1 million pounds in for him. But it is going to be another marquee signing into the club here. Jesper Lindstrom, the Danish attacking midfielder in for 4.3 mil. And since we have Muhammad Ali Cho, that means Christian Ramirez is no longer required in the side. We're gonna send him to Atletico Tucumán for 1.75 mil. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is all happened here in the opening transfer window in charge of Aberdeen, really cleaning out the trash and getting some big additions into the side. Very interested to see what this starting 11 looks like and what this season one looks like most importantly. So I mean, we take a look at the starting 11 now. I have changed from a 4-3-3 defensive to a 4-3-3 attacking, putting Lindstrom up there. It's an interesting team. I mean, I haven't done a Scottish rebuild in a long time, so I can't really remember, like, I don't really know what the what the level is like. I don't know if this is going to be a championship contending side or whether we're going to be bottom of the table, but I'm excited to find out. Okay, so we seem to be a run of the mill side. Just like Aberdeen have been lately, we are a pretty mediocre team right now, sitting Sith, Sith? Sixth in the Scottish Premiership. So we are going to try getting some business underway here in the January transfer window. Marty Kennedy, Matty Kennedy, off to the Turkish League. A lot of players going to the Turkish League in this rebuild. And we're going to make a big name starting 11 signing. So many players have gone from biggish sort of clubs in the Premier League, coming to the Scottish League in search of more game time. I want to make that happen again. I want the next Ryan Kent, I guess you could say. Anthony Gordon, not coming from Liverpool, but he's coming from the city of Liverpool. Anthony Gordon coming from Everton for 3.4 mil. And at the end of the season, we did make it into the championship group stages, but we finished bottom of the championship groups with 51 points. Celtic absolutely dominating and winning, winning the Scottish Premiership. Not that it really matters because the second division is in the game. Well, not in the game, but Ross County finished bottom. Celtic have also won the Scottish Cup. Man United win the Champions League. RB Leipzig take down Leon to win the Europa League. Death 
taxes. Tottenham winning the Conference League in Season 1. Unless it's our rebuild with them. But there we go, lads. Really building the foundations here in Season number 1 with Aberdeen. Let's take another step up. We know the level we have to reach. Let's go further and get ourselves into the top 4. Season number 2 kicking off here. Oh my... I'm kind of sad I sold this guy. J. Emmanuel Thomas. His jersey is Jet. That's cool. That's the that's that's a cool. Yeah, I like that. I'm, I'm, I might buy this guy back. Our first signing of the season, however, is a big one as we bring Jacob Ramsey to the club for 4.9 million pounds. And Jack Gurr is headed to the Spanish league. Yeah, Mirandes is like the Spanish second division, isn't it? 410 thousand pounds in the back pocket speaking of four hundred and ten thousand we are only three thousand subscribers away from that so i don't know i don't know maybe if you're new around here maybe maybe do us a favor and scorpion kick that subscribe button taking a bit of a risk here lads david bates one of our star center backs in the club so far i've decided to sell him the 25 year old scotsman is headed to bazik star president's 11 i believe it is in the turkish league for 1.75 mil. And we are going to make a big upgrade here in his replacement. It is the Welsh centre-half Ben Cabano joining us from Swansea City for 5.5 mil. I have sold a fair few of the squad players so far. So we're going to bring in a few free agents. Matthias Hoffman is the first of them. Got to get some Scottish blood continuing to come through the squad though. Barry Sutherland looks like a decent right back option. Going to sign him. The Angolian attacking midfielder. Vunal Carcelos joining us as well. And another Scotsman into the club. Jack Stretton, welcome to Aberdeen. So there we go, lads. Bit of a flip around from the opening window of last year. Last year, it was all about selling players. This year, it's all about signing them. Some big sales, but some massive, massive additions to this Aberdeen team. And this is how the Aberdeen side is looking so far. It's nice and balanced, to be honest. Besides Mackenzie and Ramsey, the rest of the team is looking pretty solid here. Lindstrom... Gordon, Ferguson, McLennan, all these guys having a good start to life. This is what we want to see, ladies and gentlemen. The quicker we can get ourselves into a top two spot, the better. That is how you get Champions League football through the Scottish Premiership. We currently sit equal second on 37 points. If we could push for a title here in Season 2, that would be an extraordinary turnaround. I'm going to send one of our signings, Matthias Hoffman, though, on a season-long loan move for the remaining six months. Matthias Hoffman off to Augsburg. Same deal here with Barry Sutherland. We're going to send the young Scotsman off to Bielefeld. It's not Champions League football in Season number 2, but I do believe finishing third in this Scottish Premiership means we will have either Europa League or Conference League football next year, which is brilliant to see. Rangers... No Steven Gerrard there, but they are still managing to win the Scottish Premiership. Meanwhile, Ross County finished bottom of the league again. Maybe that's going to be a little bit of a trend. We almost got our first piece of silverware here in charge of Aberdeen, but it is Rangers finishing as Scottish Cup winners. Bayern Munich have taken down Chelsea to win the Champions League. Leverkusen, again, Leon, didn't they lose the final last year? That is bad for them. And then Real Sociedad win the Conference League. Lewis Ferguson, though, what a season for the Scotsman. Gone up five overall, scored 13 goals and banged in 12 assists. You cannot complain about that. Also, it is now time to say thank you and goodbye to Scott Brown, who is officially retiring from football. So we went up leaps and bounds here in season number two with Aberdeen. Now it's time to build upon it. We get our first taste of European football. Let's make sure we're finishing top two at the end of season three. Another year, another goalkeeper out of the club. The 32-year-old goalkeeper, Gary Woods, is off to Burton Albion. I've been trying to get this kid some growth, but it is now time to cut ways with Jack McKenzie. We are sending him to Auxerre for 2.7 mil. It's one young Scottish left back out, and it is another young, even better Scottish left back into the club. Aaron Hickey, one of the highest potential Scotsmen in FIFA 22, joining us here for 14 million pounds from Bologna. That, I believe, is a new club record. Meanwhile, Mikey Devlin out of the club for 640k. I just want to sign as many Scottish players to this squad as possible. The best way to do that is through free agency. Ian Brody, a young Scottish goalkeeper, joining us. And I am going to send the Angolian attacking midfielder, Sarcelos, off on a season-long loan move. It wasn't the craziest transfer in the window in the world. I'll give you guys that. But the signing of Hickey is definitely a much needed addition to this starting lineup really going to take our back line to the next level let's go and have a little gander at how this starting 11 is progressing you look at the side and there is clearly like i mean it's hard to tell with a lot of the players being out on international duty but players are really taking it up the next level this team 
could almost survive. Maybe we'd be in a relegation battle, but if we were in the Premier League right now, we'd be a decent shout of surviving relegation. So I don't know how that translates to the Scottish League, but I'm happy with the progress so far. Also, I was wrong last season. We did finish in a Conference League spot, not a Europa League spot. Halfway through the season, and we are currently top of the table, baby. Although we do have Celtic Rangers both breathing down our necks. It really seems to be a three-horse race now in Scottish football rather than the normal boring two-horse race we seem to get most seasons. Going to look to get some business done here in January. Really want to make sure that we are winning the Scottish Premiership this season. Ronald Hernandez is off to Rapid Vienne. And Barry Sutherland is off on a season-long loan move to Club Bruges. We're also going to part ways with one of our starting centre-halves. Ross McCrory, who did start as a centre midfielder. I've trained him to become a centre-back. But we are going to sell him to BSC Young Boys for 8.5 mil. And in response, the Irish defender Nathan Collins is going to join us from Nor Norwich? No, Burnley. I don't know why I said Norwich. He's going to join us from Burnley for 9 mil. No! Come on, man. Come on. We have finished second in the league. Celtic doing us by two points there. Come on. I hope that means we get Champions League, but I think it might be Europa League. Ladies and gentlemen, Ross County did it. They got off the bottom of the table. Let's go, Ross County. Again, for the second straight year, we have lost the Scottish Cup final. PSG have won the Champions League. Leon finally did it. I'm actually stoked for these guys. After three years, they've lost the final, lost the final, and now they have won the Europa League 2-1 over Wolfsburg. Meanwhile, Granada have won the Conference League. Unfortunately for our sake, we didn't even get out of the group, which I mean is pretty embarrassing. Big seasons though for Anthony Gordon and Muhammad Ali Cho. Again, Ferguson, 15 and 14, but 24 goals, nine assists for Anthony Gordon. Popping up into the 81 overall. That is brilliant. Lads, I'm not even gonna try the experiment again. We're gonna let the contract of Douglas Firth expire. EA, you need to fix that glitch, man. But there we go, lads. Season three, a pretty good season, but it definitely could have been better. The goal has to be now. We need to push for a championship title. He was our first signing when we joined on as Aberdeen manager, but we are going to send Murich to the Premier League here, signing with Brentford for 32 mil, which honestly, given his value is only 17, I'm pretty happy with that, getting almost double. And that is so we can make a massive, massive addition, a massive upgrade in between the sticks. Luis Maximiano, the Portuguese keeper, is going to join us for £26.9 million from Granada. That is what we call business, ladies and gentlemen. That is good business. Going to look to sign a whole heap of Youth Academy kids, though. Rob Logan joining us from Free Agency. Duran and Archer are the latest additions to the side as well. And then all three of the remaining players I was waiting on, Amaral, Keith, and O'Connor, are all going to be added to the side here, all for free. So finishing second in the Scottish League means we are in the qualifying rounds of the Champions League. We've been drawn up against FC Mitterland. Normally, I won't watch all these qualifiers through like I am going to do now. Normally, I'll just show the results, but we're versing Mitterland. The first leg here is going to be a 4 nil win. That is a strong start. That's a very strong start to the qualifying. And in the second leg, we've taken them down 2-1. So we are into the next round of qualification. Standing between ourselves and a Champions League group stage berth is Andalek. 2-1 up after the first leg, but a red card there to Gordon, which is a big, big blow. We are headed to the Champions League group stages for the first time as Aberdeen manager here in season number four. 3-1 on aggregate over Anderlecht. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Besides the goalkeeper spot, it's all been free agents this window. Do have a little bit of money to save in January, though. Tempted to see what the squad's looking like and how we go in the Champions League, etc., etc. The goal now needs to be Champions League qualification every single year, though. But honestly... That shouldn't be an issue. Look how strong our team is now. The back line lacks slightly. But honestly, Gordon, Cho, McLennan, Lindstrom, Ferguson, these guys are absolutely feasting right now. We have got such a tough group here though, lads. Group C of the Champions League, our first ever time in the Champions League. And we've got Atletico Madrid, Bayer Leverkusen, and CSKA Moscow. Oh, Lord have mercy. No real surprise. But our first time in the Champions League group stages sees us eliminated. Hopefully, we're playing Europa League knockout round football. But 
Leverkusen and Atletico Madrid are just a level above. This is good news, though. This is good news, lads. We currently sit atop the Scottish Premiership table. Need to make sure we stay that way at the end of the season. All right, the young Scottish defender we have, Calvin Ramsey. I'm going to send him on a season-long loan move for the remainder to Sevilla. And I'm going to sell Austin Samuels to Swinton Town for £340,000. A nice addition to the back line here, though, as we bring in the Welsh defender, Nico Williams. Got the face scan and all. A big addition to the back line. Champions of Scotland. Let's go, baby. It took us four years, but we're finally hit the peak, the summit of Scottish football, and we are here to stay. No matter how much things may change, some, some things just stay the same, baby. Ross County, bottom of the table again. Rangers are absolutely tearing it up, though, in the Scottish Cup. Barcelona, they ended up winning an all-Spanish Champions League final. Let's just figure it out. And I, I, if I remember correctly from the start of the season, Atletico Madrid were in our group, so I mean... That just proves how tough we had it. Meanwhile, AC Milan have dominated Monaco to win the Europa League. And Liverpool defeat Borussia Dortmund in a Conference League final that could have easily been a Champions League final. Also, we actually went off in the Europa League. We made it to the semi-finals where we lost to AS Monaco. Mate, Conor McLennan is actually having a bit of a beast series, a beast video he was somebody that, like, when I was, like, planning out this rebuild, I was like, yeah, Conor McLennan, he could be somebody we used the first few years. He is exceeding all of my expectations and all of the game's expectations in terms of potential. Keep it coming, McLennan. Champions of Scotland for the first time in this video. Let's keep it going. Season 5. Issa Kabore was one of the guys I had on my shortlist last season where I ended up signing Nico Williams, but... Issa Kabore was available this season as a free agent. And you know what? I'm going to activate that. The Burkino Faso right back joining us on a free transfer. That is brilliant. Teddy Jenks has half decent potential this FIFA. I want to see if I can make something of his career in this video. We're going to send him on a loan move to Bezistas. Maybe five years too late, to be honest. And it is time for us to finally depart ways with Calvin Ramsey. I wanted to turn him into a beast. He's on his way. But honestly, our right back stock at the moment is just too good. So Calvin Ramsey is off to Valladolid. I feel like all I've done for the past year and a half is just sign right backs. But I wanted an end game right back. And I have finally found what I believe to be just that. Felix Castillo is joining us from Leicester City for 51.9 million pounds. That is a brilliant signing. Young Spanish regen player. Could be like the Azpilicueta regen. Could be Carver Hull's region. I'm not too sure, but I'm just excited to have him in the squad. I know that. Back in the qualifiers and in a bit of strife to begin life here. Helsinki, it's a two-all draw. Mate, we have left that late here in season number five. Five, three. Lindstrom and Cho scoring the winners in extra time. Gordon, I've just realized Gordon scored an 89th minute goal to even get us into the extra time. Oh my, okay. Whoever we're playing in the next round, we need to be much stronger than that. I accidentally simmed the first leg and forgot to show you guys, but Dinamo Zagreb is who we're versing, and it's a much more comfortable start as we have a 2-0 lead. 3-1 in the second leg. Gordon, goal, Cho, brace. You'll love to see it. Back in the Champions League. Juric scoring there for Zagreb as well. Would that be Denny Zirić? It is a transfer window based solely on right-back additions, but you know what? I'm actually happy. With, like This makes life much better for us. Kabore and Castillo in, Ramsey out. Lindstrom... Flying under the radar. The Danish attacking midfielder is going off, lads. He is absolutely going off. 88 overall. Muhammad Ali show up to an 86. Gordon, 85. I am loving this team so far. Can I get a season away from Atletico Madrid, please? Please, please, please. Luckily, there is no Leverkusen. It was Leverkusen we had? Yeah, Leverkusen last year. Benfica has taken their place. Given how good our team is starting to get... I think the, t the, the, the standard's been raised, lads. The standard has been raised. We need to get out of the group. And get out of the group we do. Not a single loss. Way too many draws. Two wins, four draws, zero losses. But we're into the knockout rounds for the first time in this rebuild. And end of the day, that's all that matters to me. And in the round of 16, we're first in Manchester City. This is really going to test to see what we're made of. Absolutely tearing the Scottish Premiership to pieces. Only one loss 
and we are 11 points clear here on the 1st of January. Need to make sure that we just absolutely dominate every season until we complete this rebuild. That is, if we don't win the league, then I'll, I might just resign. All right, looking to make a couple more upgrades here. I don't want to get complacent. I want to keep improving this squad, ladies and gentlemen. Nathan Collins is off to buy a Leverkusen for 32 mil. Another one of our defenders out of the club, this time only on a loan move. Connor Archer off to Burnley on loan. I've been trying to sell Nico Williams. He went from our first string defender to our third string, but I'm sending him back to the Premier League for 21 million pounds. And rounding out a very busy January window, we have got our marquee center half signing. It is Ibrahim Akinate, looking like an absolute snack with that new star head. We're bringing the Frenchman across from AC Milan for 48 mil. That is an absolute steal in my books. All right, ladies and gentlemen, game face is on. We have our first experience of Champions League knockout football as we take on Manchester City. We are at home here, needing a respectable scoreline to give us something to work with in the second leg. I want a miracle. Do we get a miracle? We don't get a miracle, but we keep ourselves alive. Gordon making things a little bit more manageable. A 3-2 loss to Man City. Let's go and see what we can do at the second leg at the Etihad. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. That goal for Gordon makes things a little bit more manageable. We are 3-2 down, but all we need is a win. If we get a win, 1-0, we send this to extra time. I don't even want to imagine if we can make it more. Let's just get ourselves a respectable showing here as we go to the Etihad. Oh! What? Oh my God! We've beaten Manchester City 3-0 in their own backyard. Get that one up, you Pep Guardiola, you bold fraud. You've just been outclassed here by the managerial expertise of Mr. Rebuild. We're into the quarters. Oh my God, I did not see that coming. Well, if we thought Manchester City were going to be hard, we now have PSG in the quarterfinals. But after that second leg, I am full of confidence. All right, lads, traveling to France here for the first leg. Normally in old rebuilds when the away goals rule was still here, having the away leg first would have made my absolute day. But like I said against Manchester City in that first leg, need to keep things respectable. Not going to waste any more time. Going to get into the first leg. And that is definitely, that is definitely respectable. Arguably with a better side. Double the amount of shots. But it is a two-all draw. Are we going to cause a miracle here in Season 5? The miracle is still alive, ladies and gentlemen. Two-all draw headed into this second leg at home here in Scotland. I'm nervous. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous. If we can get to the semi-finals. Taking down Man City and PSG along the way. I'm going to feel like an absolute G. Let's get into the second leg. This scoreline. The dream is over. The dream is over in it. In scintillating fashion. We've been absolutely mauled at home. Neymar. Scott McTominay coming into his home nation. And just absolutely breaking Scottish hearts. As we lose 4-1. 6-3 on aggregate. Despite the disappointment and heartbreak in the Champions League. This is absolutely beautiful to see. We have got Scottish football on an absolute silver platter right now. 14 points clear at the top of the table. Meanwhile, Motherwell have finished bottom of the league this season. Maybe I wrote Ross, Ross County off. We get the Scottish Cup as well. Let's go, lads. We take down Hearts, taking down Cammy Devlin and Hearts to win the Scottish Cup 2-0. Open up the trophy cabinet. Put that one in there, fellas. Real Madrid did end up going on to win the Champions League this season. Tottenham have won the Europa League over Liverpool. Meanwhile, it is Sassuolo winning the Conference League. What a season from both. To be fair, the top four players have all had insanely good seasons. Muhammad Ali Cho, 34 goals, 4 assists. Anthony Gordon, 31 goals, 16 assists. McLennan, 23 and 12. And Ferguson, Mr. Consistent. It's only right that we have another man with the last name Ferguson in a man, in a Aberdeen rebuild just absolutely killing it after Sir Alex. But those are some incredible stats. I am loving life in charge of Aberdeen right now. Season 6, we're back in the Champions League. Got to go through the qualifiers. But let's make it a season to remember. He's been so stable for us throughout this rebuild, but in all honesty, if we consider ourselves a Champions League contender, we need to take this back line up another gear. Ben Capano is off to Borussia Mönchengladbach for 36.7 million pounds. And Ronald Araujo is joining us here. The Uruguayan center half is signing from Bayer Leverkusen for 58.4 million pounds. That is a tasty little upgrade there. I'm also going to make a little bit of a different move as well. Jacob Ramsey 
out of the club. Another one of our earlier sort of signings. We are sending him to Sassuolo for 53.7 million pounds. And in response, I've been wanting to use this guy in a rebuild for a while. And I think it only makes sense when the color pattern works out. You've got the red and the white of the English flag, the red of his Liverpool jersey, and the red of the white of the Aberdeen badge. It is absolutely ticking every little receptor in my brain right now that Curtis Jones is our new center midfielder joining us for 66 million pounds from Leicester City. We're also going to use a little bit of the remaining finances we have in our club budget to sign the Dutch goalkeeper, Regen Smith. First round of qualifying against Legia Warsaw. We head to Poland and absolutely dominate them 4-1. On to the next round of qualifying. Gordon getting two goals and we win 3-1, 7-2 on aggregate. A challenge as we take on the Romanian Giants, starred Bucharest, but we get them done in the first leg in Romania in Bucharest, 3-1. We're going back to the Champions League baby you'd expect nothing less here in season number six four one gordon this man just cannot stop scoring goals it is brilliant so this is what the starting 11 is looking like here heading into season number six at aberdeen this front three has been doing bits since the early days mclennan now up to an 86 muhammad ali chow up to an 88 gordon up to an 87 lindstrom though absolutely carrying at a 90 overall the back line's growing the midfield's growing we are serious contenders in season number six and respectfully we can't stop shaking csk in moscow they're they're just inevitable in our group stages right now but we are arguably the top dogs of our group and this is arguably every take a shot every time i say arguably but this is arguably the weakest group stage we have had so far so let's hope we don't jinx it and get ourselves through to the round of 16. Mate, we finished second in the group. That is terrible. Not a single loss, just way too many draws. But we are through to the round of 16. End of the day, that's all that matters. The, the real downfall of coming second in a group, though, is you end up first in first place of another group. And that's generally always a pretty good side. This time it's Barcelona. Fun. Thanks. Can we go invincible here in season number six in this Scottish Premiership? Not a single loss, three draws, 17 wins. This is a brilliant start to the season. No business in the January transfer window though. So it is straight into the Champions League round of 16. We are away from home taking on, we are at home I should say, taking on Barcelona. Going to get right into it here lads. This scoreline is a 2-1 loss. Not ideal in the slightest. Yeah. Yeah, we're in a bit of strife now lads. Konate is out for three months. That is essentially his season in the books. Crap. We are rolling with an understrength side here, taking on a big name team at a world famous arena in the Camp Nou. It's not even an arena at this point, but heading to the Camp Nou, I have put Kabore into center back there, the right back, right back up, right back, I should say. Going to get into this second leg though. Not feeling too optimistic. Simulating. Oh my God, we did it. What? How do we have one of our star defenders out of the club and we still managed to do Barcelona 2-0? I'm not complaining, but that is incredible. We're back to the quarterfinals for a second successive year. And in the Champions League quarterfinals here, we are facing Chelsea. Again, we are without Canate for this first leg. Besides that, the team is looking good. We are at home here looking to take down Chelsea, the side that we've bought a few players from. We're going to get right into it here. The first leg at home is a 3-2 win. But Gordon, the man that bangs in so many goals, has received a second yellow card and is going to be suspended for the second leg. We are so lucky though that Ansu Fati did miss a penalty there in the 56th minute. All right, time for the second leg. A severely understrength side. No Anthony Gordon. No Ibrahima Kanate. We have the advantage, but we need a lot of heart and good vibes to get us through to the semi-finals. This would make things so much sweeter. We're gonna get right into it here against Chelsea and we lose on penalties. We have been eliminated from the Champions League quarterfinals on a penalty shootout. It looks like nobody wanted to score in that shootout. How many missed penalties are there? Come on. I'm actually dejected after that loss in the round of in the quarterfinals. But we won the Scottish Premiership again, so I guess I can get excited about that. Hibbs, what is going on? Marty Boyle, what is doing, lad? Hibbs come last. And we are unable to get our hands on another Scottish Cup. Celtic winning this year. Atalanta ended up going on to win the Champions League. That is 
Not what I was expecting. Manchester City take down AS Monaco to win the Europa League. Napoli take down Nice to win the Conference League. Muhammad Ali Cho is on a first class ticket with no return to the Rebuild Hall of Fame. This dude, like, to be fair, Cho, McLennan, Gordon, and Ferguson have absolutely carried this rebuild so far. There is a fair case for all of them to be Hall of Famers. Also, if you guys want me to make a video about the Rebuild Hall of Fame, let me know. That might be something I'd be interested in doing. If I'm being honest, I'm very happy with our starting 11 so far. Just want to keep the lads growing, but our bench let us down. We had to play weaker players when we had injuries last year. I want to make sure that if something happens like that again this year in the Champions League, that we have suitable backups. So Timothy Weyer is going to be the first signing, joining the American, signing the American from Marseille for just under 30 mil. Never heard of this guy, but he looks like a bit of a beast, honestly. Jens Lees Kajuste, the Swedish midfielder, joining us from 30 for 33.9 mil from Leicester. A nice backup midfield option for sure. Lewis! No! How can you do this to us? Lewis Ferguson wants to leave the club. I don't want this to happen. This hurts. Top 10 saddest moments in rebuild history right here. Lewis Ferguson, Mr. Consistent himself, is out of the club and off to AS Monaco. We managed to get 121.6 million pounds for him. And in response, nobody's going to fill the gap that has been left from Lewis Ferguson. But I'm going to try doing coming as close as possible to it, to be honest. Jude Bellingham joining us for 133 million pounds from AC Milan. Bit of Scottish versus Irish action in the first round of Champions League qualifying. And we have absolutely spanked Bohemian 5-1 in the first leg. Fair play to them. They had a good second leg, but we still are into the next round. FC Midtjylland again, the team that we versed in our first ever Champions League qualifying game. We've got them here in the second round and we beat them 2 nil. We draw 2 all in the first leg. I really haven't been able to talk today, lads, but we do take them down 3-0 in the second leg. We're back to the group stages as you'd expect. But that is a busier and more expensive transfer window than I expected. I didn't have to, I didn't think we'd be touching the starting 11 in this window, but it is what it is. Ferguson, unfortunately out. Bellingham, good to see him in. So here is a look at the side. Ferguson was initially wearing the captain's armband, but we're gonna hand that over to the only remaining player from our initial starting 11. McLennan is the new club captain. This team, is absolutely saucy. I really want Jones to pick it up a little bit. If there was anywhere I might improve, I might go for another center midfielder. But the team's just looking great. We finally escaped CSKA Moscow, but that doesn't mean we won't be heading to Moscow for the Champions League this season, as we've been drawn up against Leon, Benfica, and Lokomotiv Moscow. Pop of the group, finally. It only took us, what, five or, five or four attempts in the Champions League to actually top the group. But we're through to the round of 16. And in the round of 16, we're going to be versing the side that eliminated us on penalties last year, looking for our revenge as we face Chelsea. 11 points clear of the Scottish Premiership. It's almost automatic at this point, isn't it? All right, no business done here in the January transfer window. I'm going to keep Jones in the squad for this season at least, give him a little bit more time to grow. But we are here at Stamford Bridge, the place where we were heartbroken last year, losing on a penalty shootout. Let's see if we can get our revenge. The first leg here against the Blues is a... That makes life so much harder. 2-1 down. Thank the Lord that Ansu Fati missed that penalty in the 50th minute. We need a massive, massive result here in the second leg. We need a win and we need to make it convincing. We are behind on aggregate. Screw it. Let's just get right into it. Let's just get right into it, lads. The scoreline against Chelsea. Come on! Yes! Yes! 2-0! Maximiano got injured, though. Oh, crap. Crisis averted. Crisis averted. It's only a head cut. Seven days. He's going to be okay. He's going to live! Another team that we have faced in Champions League knockout round football in this rebuild is Barcelona. Can we get it done over them once again? Time for the first leg on the road here at the Camp Nou. We need a strong performance. I do not want to be behind like we were against Chelsea. I want to be flying into the second leg in the driver's seat. A 4-0 win would be exactly what the doctor ordered. We're going to get into it here. Let's get to simulating. The scoreline against Barcelona. Okay. It's not a 4-0 lead, but it is a 2-all 
draw. Here we go, lads. At home, everything is in the balance at the moment. A two-all scoreline. Can we get past this quarterfinal curse we seem to have developed? We're going to get into it here at home in Aberdeen. Simulating. Oh, my God. 4-2. There is so much to unpack right now. So, McLennan got sent off. That's a big L. We're through to the semis. McLennan's going to be suspended, though. He gets a straight red card in the 66th minute. Gordon puts us in the lead in the 68th. Then Renier scores two minutes later. And then in extra time, Gordon goes bang again in the 104th. Muhammad Ali Cho goes bang again in the 109th. And we're through to the semis. That is incredible. And in the semifinals, it is the team that I still don't know how we beat them earlier in season number five. I think it was season number four. It is Manchester City. The other side is Madrid Derby, but we're focused on getting ourselves over Pep Guardiola, over Man City, and into a Champions League final. All right, on the road here for the first leg, off to the Etihad. We have had happy times at the Etihad. It has been a good stomping ground for us after that second leg last time. Screw it, let's just get into it here. Come on, lads, sending all the energy. Let's simulate against Manchester City. We've done it again! We've done it again! We own the Etihad Stadium! I run this city! Aberdeen runs Manchester City! Let's go, lads! 4-1, Gordon and Che with a brace. That is one foot and about four toes into the Champions League final. Do not bottle, do not bottle, do not bottle. I'm simulating. Do not bottle, we do not bottle. Champions League final bound in absolute style. And in the Champions League final here in 2028, it is going to be Aberdeen Football Club versus Real Madrid. Let's go. Taking a look around the grounds at the other competitions though, lads. Villarreal have won the Europa League. Stade Rene win the Conference League. What's up with Borussia Dortmund making the uh, conference, final, conference League final in this rebuild? It is another Scottish Championship. 10 points ahead of Celtic. Fair play to Ross County. They've had a shine up. Motherwell now at the bottom of the table. Tony Watt. What's doing, brother? But we have added another Scottish Cup to the trophy cabinet, taking down St. Johnson 3-0 in the final. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for the Champions League final. Heading into this rebuild, I had no idea what sort of time frame I was looking at to even get into the Champions League final, let alone be contending. I think we have a contending team. It's a bit frustrating considering our Spanish right back is gonna be suspended as you can see for the Champions League final. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit of shuffling around here, but I'm hopeful the attack led by Muhammad Ali Cho, led by Gordon, led by McLennan. These guys have been absolutely insane. Lindstrom, it is just, it is a cooked team of relatively unknown players we've put together, but it is now time. Aberdeen, a former giant of Scottish football versus Real Madrid, a current Spanish giant and European giant. Can we get it done? Let's go. Showtime, baby. Real Madrid versus Aberdeen. Let's get this European title to Scotland. Real Madrid controlling possession. That's terrible defending from us. Dybala just playing around with us. Paqueta. Don't let them get a good shot off. They're going there to Leon Goretzka. Leon Goretzka just defend. Going there. Across the face of goal. I mean, I'll allow Hudson to do that all day. Keep doing that, brother. Playing it around again. Well, nicely intercepted, though, from Kabore. Only in the Champions League final because of the suspension. Cho going there to Curtis Jones. Curtis Jones going to go out there. I see the run being made on the left-hand side there. Gordon, Gordon, Gordon. Cho, Muhammad Ali. Cho is going to give us the lead in the Champions League final. That was beautifully constructed. Come on, Aberdeen. We've got the advantage. Come on. Oh, it's a foul. 
thought that would have been a foul. Let's put plenty of numbers back in. Dybala on the attack for Real Madrid. They've got numbers out wide, though. Let's defend. Dybala gone there to Lucas Piqueta. Their whole attack's going through them. Let us bring the keeper off. Bring the keeper out. Good save, Maximiano. That was a little bit risky. I'm not going to lie. Just defend. Just get people back. Where's my midfield? Dybala. Go on there to Piqueta. We can't let them have this much space to pass, honestly. Dybala. Go on there to hudson Adoy. Just defend. They go for the long shot. That animation scared the crap out of me. Just don't allow anything here. Lang. He's been a nightmare. Lang with the short good save. Keep it in. Nice. Just clear it. See if we can build something out the back. That is a shocking touch. Oh, crap. Just bring the keeper out. Again. Falcons him. We are getting so... We could easily be three goals behind right now. We are getting so lucky. Oh, that's beautifully held up. We actually might be on here. I see that run. First time ball. Keepers off the line. Oh my god. The counter attack of dreams. Muhammad Ali chose a brace. And we're 2-0 up despite being dominated. Oh my god. Can we get something on the counter attack here? Third goal. Would see you See you out wide. McLennan bringing it down and heading it nicely there. Jones. Jones. Screw it. Let's go for the long. It was worth a go. Come on. I see that run being made. Nice, McLennan. I see you in the middle. Cho for the hat trick. Cho going back there to Curtis Jones. Curtis Jones. Bellingham. Bellingham going back there. Shot blocked. Comes out to us, though. Lindstrom nicely held up. Brilliant there to McLennan. McLennan to Jones. That is surely going to be the Champions League final coming to Aberdeen. Curtis Jones. 3-0 up. Let's go. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting a phone call as we win the Champions League final. It's what you love to see. Lads, it has been Jared HD here. I hope you enjoyed this rebuild as much as I have. Oh, make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here. I'm out. Peace.